Welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa Caprio. Do you believe in magic? What if you were told that all you had to do was get a little creative and work a magic spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Here on Postcards to the Universe, we will share manifesting, tips, postcards, creativity, abundance, and prosperity. Here is your host, Melissa Caprio. Welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. It's Wednesday, my favorite day of the week. How's everybody doing? I hope you guys are doing well. And 2023 is turning out to be a good year for you so far. Today, I have a really cool guest. She is astrologer, Desiree Roby Antela, and we're going to talk about our sun signs, But we're going to focus on uh, our sun signs in relationships. So it's going to be a really cool conversation. So just stay tuned and she's going to um, join me in just a few minutes. To all my regulars, welcome. Thanks for being here again each week with me. I really appreciate it. Um, And for those of you who have found me for the first time, you're joining me, you're new, welcome. A little bit about me. I am also an author, I'm a photographer, I'm an artist, and I have a book and it's titled Postcards to the Universe, Harness the Universe's Power and Manifest Your Dreams. And there are 30 manifesting stories along with photographs that I took of the contributors manifesting postcards in my book. And in it, I also include a bunch of uh, writing exercises and it helps us get clear on what we wanna manifest because we're not always quite sure exactly what it is. A lot of times it's a feeling we want, but we're not really sure how how to do that. So the exercises are there to help us get clear on what it is we want. And there's also a toolbox full of fun exercises on how to manifest um, money, health, career, and love, which we're going to be focusing on love today and so much more. So if you're interested in doing the inner work exercises and reading uh, everyone's really cool journeys of transformation, inspiration, and manifesting, please go and purchase a copy at your favorite bookstore, or you can find it online, you know, Amazon, a whole bunch of places, uh, Barnes and Noble. So check it out. Okay, I am also asking and I keep asking each week for people to send me a manifesting postcard. And if you have no idea what that is, it's probably the easiest way to describe it is kind of like a little mini vision board, but you can find out how to create one at my website, postcardstotheuniverse.com, and also the address there where you can send it. So I love getting them in the mail. If you happen to be on Facebook, join me on my Facebook uh, public group, Postcards of Love, and I share funny and uplifting stories. And of course, you can always find me on any social media, Postcards to the Universe. So each week I share a, I call them a magical message, and I post them on social media, and it's an image, of a manifesting postcard uh, that I like to photograph that has an affirmation or I'll find something that has an affirmation because I like to focus on affirmations weekly. I find them to be powerful ways for it to become a new belief in our lives, right? And what we believe is what we create, right? So this week's magical message is what you imagine you create. Um, And I found this quote uh, as I was uh, writing up some notes for today's show, and I thought this was perfect, and it's from Oprah Winfrey, who has manifested an amazing life, if you know anything about Oprah and her history and her background. So she says, your life is a reflection of the way you think. You are creating your own reality. You're creating your own reality show every day in every experience and every encounter. What you believe is what you become, and one person can make a difference, and that person is you. And I thought, yeah, that's really powerful. And she can definitely claim that statement in her life, if you know anything about her. So, you know, it just reminds us to watch what we're thinking about, uh, about ourselves, Um whether it's negative or positive, usually we're thinking negative things, which isn't good. We want to shift that to thinking positive things. And to make sure that we keep repeating um, these thoughts uh, in our own mind, which are encouraging. And it takes practice, but like anything else, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. 
because I can very quickly turn into the person I'm telling myself that I am. So I want to tell myself the good things that I am, not focus on the things I don't like, because we all have things we don't like, right? We don't want to go there. So using our imagination to create is very powerful. Um, every idea is born from our imagination. And that's why I do the postcard project, because we get to tap into our creativity to manifest. And that's what um, I like to do, being an artist, having an artist background and our thoughts our creativity and the actions we take in life it all count, it all starts from um, a thought and many of the thoughts we carry are not our own they were handed to us so we have the power to change that and once the thought uh, com we start once we have the thought then we we explore it through our imagination so if you look back, can you see how some of the things you imagined came to fruition in your life or how it has influenced your life right now? I bet you you can. Um, if you think of children, they have so much more of an active imagination um, than any of us adults, and they don't limit themselves, right? We limit ourselves. So we have to tap into that creative energy and be more childlike. Kids have a different way of seeing the world and it's usually more optimistic than us adults. So allow yourself, you know, to daydream. Daydreaming is a great way to do it. You can write down stories, create something on paper and just see what happens, you know? And of course, make a manifesting postcard. Take the time, set it aside, send it to me, tell, and then let me know when your, your, your manifestation becomes your reality. So do anything that can spark up your imagination and inspire you to be more creative. So that was my thought for the week. Okay, next week, I have author Shelley. Kahir, a world-renowned past life regressionist, and Dr. Shelley's method of combining energy work and hypnosis has been endorsed by numerous leaders in the field of consciousness, including near-death experiences pioneer Dr. Raymond Moody and Dr. Brian Weiss, and her book we're going to talk about next week is Past Lives in Ancient Lands and Other Worlds. So it's going to be really interesting if you're interested in past lives. Join me next week. But to get to my guest today... Desiree, <laughs> make sure I say it right, Ruby Antilla. Did I say it right, Desiree? Did I say it right? Almost, almost. Desiree almost. Roby. Roby. Roby, Roby, yes. Okay. Woo, get these names right. Desiree Roby and Antilla specializes in sun signs and astrological relationships. She has been studying astrology for several decades through different mediums, but mostly through observation and research. She writes about astrology in modern understanding and inclusive and inclusive ways as astrology is meant to be a tool for everyone her goal is to help you understand yourself and your loved ones on a deeper level sun signs and love relationship compatibility by the stars brings clarity and harmony to your romantic relationships with this book on sun signs and how each one approaches matters of the heart more than a compatibility book sun signs and love proves that there are no bad matches every sign can match with any other if you have the right knowledge join desiree on a thorough exploration of all 12 signs including their general characteristics how they interact with other signs how they are in bed what actions can cause a breakup and more. This comprehensive book also provides a variety of associations for every sign, including element, ruling planet, flowers, crystals, animals, food, and more. From each sign's mythology to advice for resolving differences, sun signs in love help make your current and future relationships sail smoother and happier. And if you're listening and you want to follow along, you can go to her website, simplysunsigns.com. Welcome, Desiree. Thanks so much for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, I was going through your book, obviously, <laughs> before the show. It's really interesting the way you lay it out. So before we get into that, how did you personally get into um, astrology? And then the, the follow-up would be what made you focus on relationships? Yeah, those are great questions. Uh, I have always loved astrology, um, even prior to the very recent popularity it has gained uh, I, you know, I'll, I, I've loved it for over 20 years. So I think it's been just a really natural thing that I've been attracted to ever since I was around 12. 
Um, and so I just started really studying how certain people acted, reacted, what their personalities were like, what they looked like, um, based upon what their, you know, sun sign is. Uh, and then, you know, as I got older and started dating in my 20s, I was that friend that was into that stuff, you know, like, now I feel yes. like the Gen Zers are, <laughs> they are all into it. Everyone loves astrology. But, you know, when I was dating 15, 10, 10 years ago, I, yeah. it wasn't as popular. So it was even hard to even get a sun sign. So my friends would always come to me and say, hey, I just started dating, you know, this sign. Tell me all about it. Um, and I actually had a friend say, oh, you should write about this. Like, start a blog. Mm -hmm. This is when blogs were really cool. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> before the, you know, like, the, the big boom in, in TikTok and right. Instagram and all of that stuff. Blogs were really kind of the, the cool thing to do. So... That's exactly what I did is I started my own blog and started writing about relationships because that's that was the focal point of my life at that point was, you know, different relationships. So yeah. I ended up writing all of them and mm -hmm. it took me about 10 years and then I finished it. Um, and then I ended up getting married and having my son and I took some time off of writing about relationships, but then I had a different friend say, hey, Desiree, you should really submit this to become a book. And uh, long story short, I did. And here we are. <laughs> yeah. No, Many it's really. Later. Well, everybody always, um, yeah, I was one of those uh, kids, young persons that was always into this kind of stuff. You know, I used to love the metaphysical stores and always knew about my sign and and all that and that fun stuff. But I didn't realize how important our, our rising and moon signs are until much later, you know, and how that sort of completes. I mean, it's so much deeper than that, but it really does give you even more of a perspective about who you are, you know, if you're just, you know, because some people say, oh, they're a Virgo, but they don't seem like a Virgo, you know, or, you know, what we generalize, but, um, it's, it's much deeper than that, but it's the, what's really cool about the way the book is laid out is you start with Aries, right? Cause we always start with Aries. Why do we start with Aries though, by the way? Yeah. So Aries is the first sign on the astrological wheel. Okay. And okay, that's what so I for, for me personally, I actually celebrate my new year on the spring equinox, which is what I consider personally to be my new year, mm -hmm. uh, rather than using the Gregorian calendar. Um, I call it the muggle calendar. Yeah. <laughs> the astrological right. calendar is, is what I follow. So in, in astrology, the first sign uh, is when the sun ingresses into Aries on, yep, on the spring, spring equinox. On the spring equinox. Okay. So when, when you delve into the book, so what she does is the way she has it laid out is she starts with Aries and then she has Aries paired up with each other sign in the Zodiac and what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are. And, and I really like that you you said that there's no such thing as a bad match in astrology because some people say, oh, you're with a Leo. Leos are, you can't be with a Leo. It's the worst for your sign, you know, kind of thing. And then people have all these feelings about it. And you're saying that's not necessarily true. So the way she broke down her book is really interesting. It's very easy to follow. So um, are there certain signs that are paired uh, together better romantically like in I, general i mean obviously I we're generali like we're generalizing here you know nothing is set in stone but go ahead yeah i would love to change the narrative in mm -hmm. all of astrology uh because it's just simply not true that you don't okay. get along with certain signs so right. Um, and, and the reason for that being is it's simply just a different type of energy, right? So typically what people condone as a good match in astrology, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, you can't see me, but I have my hands up with quotes. 
good okay. match to astrology <laughs> right. is um, our trine signs, right? So signs that are of the same elements as you. Mm. So for example, if you are uh, a Scorpio, you're trying the signs that are trying to you are Cancer and Pisces, mm. right? And they're both water mm. signs. Okay. So the reason people say that is because trine mm -hmm. energy is easy energy. However, mm -hmm. in astrology, just like everything, there mm -hmm. is so there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. So right. if I see a couple sinistry, which sinistry is simply taking two birth charts mm -hmm. and overlaying them and looking at the angles between them. Mm -hmm. Um, so when I look at that and I see lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of trines, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, this is kind of lazy. This is like a lazy energy. Like it's so easy. It's almost like mm -hmm. there's nowhere for the energy to, that makes sense. to hmm. release. Right. So yeah. it's nice to have some different types of energy. So for example, op opposing signs right mm -hmm. so they are of the same modality but they're opposites right so they they want the same thing but they have different ways of getting there but yet there's also this really strong attraction so mm -hmm. you know and then what what astrology condones as a bad match are your square matches which okay. i find fascinating because all square matches have the same modality and modality there's in astrology is how we communicate or operate. So there's cardinal okay. signs, fixed signs. That's and perfect. Signs. I'm going to tell you, hold that thought right now. Cause we're going to take our first break, but oh. I actually want to go over what the aspects, elements and modalities are. So people listening will understand what we're talking about. So it'll be clear. So stay tuned guys. And we'll be back in just a couple of minutes and we're going to jump right back in. Stay tuned. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi. I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. And don't forget to tune in each week here on Ohm Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. The rainbow is God's promise of hope for you and me. And though the clouds hang heavy and the sun we cannot see, we know above the dark clouds that fill the stormy sky, Hope's rainbow will come shining through when the clouds have drifted by. Teresa Caprio is the president and founder of Rainbow Guardian, Inc., 
a nonprofit 501c3 serving the intellectually challenged slash developmentally disabled, including autism. Teresa started the foundation in 1995 so she could help make a better life for her intellectually challenged daughter. Her dream is that the Rainbow Guardian will provide the necessary tools and education to help the public understand the special needs population because it's often discarded in mainstream society. To find out more or make a donation and support, please go to www.rainbowguardian.org. Rainbow Guardian's special mission is to see these unique people live a happy, full life and have a future of liberty and equality. So if you're just joining me, today my guest is astrologer Desiree Roby Antilla, and we're talking about sun signs and relationships, and specifically we're talking about how she breaks down in her book, Sun Signs and Love, Relationship Compatibility by the Stars. So Desiree, like before we get into it, because some people only maybe know their sun sign and they have no idea what aspects mean in signs or elements or modalities. So let's start with, um, you have it in your book, very easy to follow what aspects are. So can you share that with us? Of course, yeah. So aspects are really, simp to simply kind of just break it down, um, it's really the secret of synastry. So it is the distance between mm -hmm your zodiac sign. So for example, if you are conjunct, that mm -hmm. means you're the same sign. If you're semi-sextile, it's 30 degrees, you're one sign apart, and so on and so forth. So I, in my book, I go over um, all of the, obviously all of the ones, the aspects that the, um, that every pairing makes up. Uh, mm -hmm. So that really kind of just define it's defined as the energy uh, between the pair so it gives a different vibration because of the distance that they were they are apart essentially okay right because so you have conjunct semi sextile 30 degrees sextile 60 that's two signs square you you mentioned square before the break that's when you're three signs away when you trine your lover's four signs, and then quincunx. How do you say that? Yep. Quincunx? Yeah, you quincunx. said it, yep, quincunx. Okay, <laughs> five sun signs away, okay, and then your opposite is when you're six signs away. So I'm a Gemini, so my opposite would be uh, Sag, right? Yeah, Sag. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. that's right. Okay. <clears throat> okay, just getting it. Clarification for the for <laughs> following so they understand. Okay, so that's one element in the sign compatibility. So you put two charts over each other and you see where they fall in um, the aspect category for compatibility. Is that correct? Yep, that's right. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I'm like, I'm kind of understanding. So now we have elements. So a lot of people are familiar with elements, but I'll let you share what the elements are, and which sign is which element. Yeah, I think that using the elements gives astrology a, a tangibility, right? So you know what mm -hmm. fire looks, feels, smells like, mm -hmm. acts like. Um, so there are four elements in a, that we use in astrology. And the four are fire, earth, air, and water. So your fire signs are Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Earth signs are Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Air signs are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And then your water signs are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Uh, and so what really gives the, um, the overall feeling or maybe the tangible idea is combining or mixing those two elements right so if you have a fire and a water sign you know too much fire can evaporate water too much water puts fire out but if you find a really good balance it creates steam and so i go through in my book what you know each element mixed together creates uh, mm -hmm. to give an idea of what kind of balance that relationship will need 
Right. Okay. Right. So, um, and it's uh, interesting that if you have had your own chart read about yourself personally, you may find that um, you'll see a lot of the other elements in certain aspects of your chart. Like I'm a Gemini sun, but I am a double Leo. I have uh, moon and rising uh, are Leo, and I, but I also have a lot of earth signs in my houses. So there's a lot of, you know, earth energy there because I wouldn't, I don't know from what others have told me, I'm not a typical Gemini. I don't know what a typical Gemini is, but I'm not necessarily one. So you have to look at all those other things in your chart also to see kind of why your personality is or why you're certain ways. Doesn't that really make a difference for people who are really wanting to understand what the astrology means to them? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, yeah, and judging a, you know, a relationship by, by just your sun signs is like judging a book by its cover, mm-hmm. which, um, you know, a book can really grow with your relationship too, or, mm-hmm. you know, or with you, because usually, you know, the first thing you find out when you start dating somebody is their sun sign. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, later down the road, you, you, find everything else out because you need a little bit more specifics, right? You need a birth time and a location and all of that, right. which is, is pretty specific. So what you can do though, is, you know, read the chapters of my book. So for example, you know, if you and your partner, if you find out your partner's moon sign, like, so mm-hmm. you just said that you had a Leo moon, like, let's say your mm-hmm. partner has a, an Aquarius moon. Well, you should go read the Leo and Aquarius section because it will definitely resonate Um, And then reading it from a perspective of what the moon means in astrology, right? So moon means emotions, how we deal with emotions and our emotionality. Um, So reading it from that perspective. And then, of course, like your Venus signs are very important, right? Mm -hmm. Venus represents Mm -hmm. love and harmony in your relationship. So Mm -hmm. reading that chapter of your Venus signs makes a lot of sense, too. Um, Mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. So, yeah. So I think that this book can grow with you depending on where you are in your relationship. Um, Or you can keep it simple and just do sun signs as well. I did write it from the perspective of the energy between, you know, the two sun signs. But it definitely applies throughout the other planets. Yeah, I would think so. And um, I'll let you share about uh, modalities. A lot of people don't. A lot of people know their elements, like they've heard, oh, I'm an air sign, oh, I'm a water sign. But many people don't know what um, the modalities mean in a sign. So can you tell us about the modalities for each sign? Yeah, absolutely. So modality is so incredibly important because it shows us in astrology how we communicate. And as everybody knows, communication is a a very large piece of your (laughs) relationship right right? of course not everything um i've been married for almost six years i've been with my husband now for seven and a half and it's like you know we're we're still working on our communication right i mean it's like a constant thing you always are working at and getting better at and trying to understand your partner through so modality is uh the mode in which you know the energy of that sign is experienced or communicated. So there are three modalities and each modality includes a sign from each element. So for example, your cardinal signs, right? You have Aries, which is fire, Cancer, which is water, Libra, air, Capricorn is earth, right? And then fixed signs, same thing. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius are your fixed signs. And then your mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. So okay. when you're thinking about these signs, uh, you can think about the time that they're born. And this is how I like to remember it or think of it or okay. give it some sort of visual. So yeah. all of the cardinal signs are your leaders. And okay. the reason for that is because these people are born at the time of year when the seasons mm-hmm. are starting, right? So these, okay. these are the, the seasons that start on the equinox. Okay. And on the solstices, right? And then your fixed signs are at the center of the season. So, for example, Scorpio is in the center of autumn. Um, And then you have, you know, Leo, which is the dead center of summer and so Mm -hmm. on and so forth. And then your mutable signs are kind of in that in-between space, right? So if you think of 
Virgo season that's in between summer and fall. You have a lot mm-hmm. of days weather-wise in Virgo season that are hot like summer and other days that are cool like fall. So it's mm-hmm. this really flexible energy. It's this really chameleon-like. There are mm-hmm. All, all of those or most of those mutable signs are very have duplicity, right? Mm-hmm. So Gemini mm-hmm. is yeah. double because they're the twins yeah. and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, and so each of these acts differently, communicates differently, and it's a huge piece of the puzzle when figuring out how compatible a couple is. So if I see mm-hmm. a couple so what with is, a lot of... Can you of, tell us some aspects of 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 cardinal fixed and mutable like just a couple little characteristic traits from each one that people may recognize and others as they're listening yeah so cardinal signs are natural born leaders they're Mm self-starters okay um they're assertive they're influential they like to lead they like to dominate typically Mm -hmm. which is Mm -hmm. what i was just saying okay okay perfect is that when you have a couple that has a lot of cardinal you have two cooks huh. in the kitchen and they're gonna have to learn how to get along they're gonna both mm. have to lead in different ways right, right. so then yeah. you have your fixed fixed signs which are organizers that are a lot more steady they like to keep their energy inward or mm. you know to themselves um they're very hard workers but they're very resistant to change they don't want to lead they don't want to follow they just want to do their own thing and then okay. you have mutable signs. Yeah, mm-hmm. they have mutable signs, which are the communicators of the zodiac. Mm-hmm. They do both give out and keep energy. They're very, uh, they're unstoppable. They're flexible. Um, they're able to transition, um, and they don't necessarily need to have a lot of control, but they mm-hmm. sure like to get what they want, and they're, and they're good at it, right? Because they're the communicators, mm-hmm. so they're they're great at talking their way in and out of things. That is true. (laughs) That is very true. So is it more challenging for two signs in the same modality? Um, Does that create more challenges? Like you mentioned the Cardinals, both being leaders, two cooks in the kitchen. What about two fixed signs? Or is it harder for them to sort of navigate certain things? And the same would apply to two mutables, like two mutable signs. Yeah, that's what everyone says, right? So everyone okay. is like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. That's the square, that square aspect, right? They, the square aspects all have the same modality. So they're like, oh, don't get with that person because that's too difficult. But then if you think about it, wouldn't they be able to understand each other more? I mean, I yes. sure think so if you yeah. operate the same way. So for fixed signs, for example, they're both stubborn, right? Mm-hmm. So they, if, but if they're getting along, they can manifest a lot mm-hmm. together because they are on the same path and they're fixed okay. and they're focused. Right. But right. So then you have two Cardinals, two, le- two leaders. Um, mm-hmm. It could be difficult, but you know, if you also have a fixed and a Cardinal Cardinals don't, or fixed really don't like to follow. And if they have someone who's like, Hey, we should go do this. And that fixed sign is like, well, I don't want to, then you still have a problem. So, you know, I think <laughs> okay. it's, it's any, any way you look yeah. at it, you can look at the positive or negative, but I, I, again, I like, I, I hope to change the narrative mm-hmm. of there is like a bad modality together. There isn't. It's just knowing that yeah. it's there and then knowing when you see it in your partner, when your partner is being or, or playing out their, their natal turn and they're being cardinal and they're being bossy, you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know <laughs> what, what that's coming from. I know that they feel like they need to leave. That's an inherent for them. So if you have that compassion around it, yeah. um, I think it helps. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And truthfully, um, for me personally, um, I have a lot of Geminis in my life. Two of my most significant romantic relationships were Geminis. My mother's a Gemini. We get along really well. There's a lot of Geminis around me. So I get along really well with other Geminis being a Gemini. And maybe that's because we are mutable. 
you know, so I can be that chameleon. I can, oh, you want to go to this like party and you want to dress up in costume? Yeah. Oh, you want to go to a book club the next day and go read a serious book? Yeah, I could do that too. You know, like totally. I have so many different kinds of friends, you know, because, and that must be part of my mutable. That That's my personality. I'm interested in a million different things. And that's very much a Gemini. So I get along well with other Geminis. I've never had a problem with them. Yeah, I love conjunct pairings. My husband and I are both Scorpios. So a lot of my friends are with their same sign. And, you know, I think that works great. Um, I, again, all relationships work. But, you know, in my book, I also talk about, you know, same signs. You know, they're like a mirror to one another. So Mm -hmm. when they get along, it's fantastic. And when they don't, it's like very (laughs) reflective because they're so similar in personality. So, yeah, I mean, I I love it. And, and yes, those are all very strong Gemini characteristics for sure. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you what you and your husband were. So you're both Scorpios, and so it works really well. Now, what is your um, – both of your moon signs, how do they work together? Yeah. So both my husband and I are Scorpio sun, Sagittarius rising. So we have the same sun and wow. same rising. Yeah. <laughs> And then, um, and we, uh, his moon is uh, Aries and mine is Scorpio. So we both have Mars ruled moons. And so Mm -hmm. our moons report, uh, yes, to our Mars. And so that's very, (laughs) it makes things very interesting. Uh, Mars is, you know, in in astrology is like aggression and war and passion. So Mm -hmm. there's just a lot of when we get along, it's fantastic. And when we don't, it's like, all right, we're, let's do this. Let's throw the sleeves up and, <laughs> you know, um, but we wouldn't have it any other way. So, yeah, our, our charts are very conjunct is the aspect that you would call. So if you look at our sinistry, our charts mm-hmm. look very, very similar to one another. Well, since you do this, when you met your husband, did you take his, find out all his, his all his information and do a chart on him when you started dating? Like right yeah, away? Yeah, see, it's funny. <laughs> I've known my, I've known my husband since I was 12. So okay. I, I've known him for so long. I don't even remember the first time I looked at his chart. But yes, mm-hmm. I do remember thinking, wow, our charts are so similar. Um, but we also have a four-year-old together and yes, I mean, immediately the second he was born, I'm like, where's my phone? I want to look at his chart, you know, because I just love, um, and it's it's a joy as his mother to watch him live his chart out, you know, and it's, it's, astrology is just such an incredible tool and it's, it's incredible to watch people around you live out their birth chart for sure. Oh, that's really, really cool. All right. Um, I just looked at the clock. And I realize we're at our second break, so let's take it here, and then we're going to continue our conversation. Stay tuned, guys. Be back in just a couple minutes. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Hi, I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? 
Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. And don't forget to tune in each week here on Om Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. If I could be you, and you could be me, for just one hour, if you could find a way to get inside each other's mind, walk a mile in my shoes, walk a mile in my shoes, walk a mile in my my shoes. shoes, we've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Hi, welcome back. So Desiree, I was thinking during the break, you said something right before we went to break about loving, watching people living out their chart um, what do you mean by that when you say, I love when people live out their chart? How, 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 what does that look like? Yeah, so astrology obviously gives us different clues as to how someone will react or mm-hmm. potentially be in certain situations. So I can just give you a few examples, right? So yeah. my husband, for example, his moon is in Aries and, you know, Aries is known to be a self-starter, right? They have like all these ideas and they love starting things. Um, uh-huh. And they also have short fuses sometimes. So sometimes, you know, when, when my husband uh, has like this burst of, you know, like, oh, we're letting, he has like this grand idea and he, you know, it's very quick and like, let's go do it. And I'm like, let's slow down. (laughs) Let's think about it. And (laughs) uh, let's see, let's like, you know, think this all the way through. Right. So, and like, it'll make me laugh when uh, he does things like that. Right. And he's letting his chart out. Mm -hmm. Um, He also has his Mars in Virgo and Virgo is that sign that has always got to be doing something. They love to produce. They're very productive. Yeah. They're all about, you know, they roll the sixth house of like daily tasks. So, you know, even on a Saturday morning, my husband's like, all right, what are we doing today? What chores are we getting done? What? I'm like, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> like he can't, like even on vacation, I'm like, I mean, he cannot sit. Like I could sit in a lounge chair with a good book, like all day long but he's got to be doing something constantly. <laughs> so, you know, I make room for that and I, I have compassion around that. Uh, and so that's what I mean when someone's living out, living out their chart, like they, they are true, truly characteristic of, of what, you know, their planets are acting out in which sign. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, my niece, who's turning 13, she's a Pisces, but she has the moon in Aries. And oh boy, when she's on f- on her temper gets sparked, we're like, watch out. She goes from zero to 100 in like a second. It's crazy. Yeah, right. Yeah. But then they're over I know about really those Aries too. moon people. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. I think my Mars yeah. is in Sagittarius. Yeah, I okay. think I have a Mars in Sag. Yeah, if I remember. I do. Yeah, there's a yeah, that's what it is. It's in Sagittarius. So what's really cool in the book is, like you were saying, we were saying earlier in the show, there's no such thing. So let's just take that out. There's no such thing as two signs that shouldn't be together. So we've already accepted, we know this. So, but the way you break it down is, is like, you'll have a section in the book, like how to lose a fill in the sign, like how to lose a Gemini, Gemini, how to lose a Cancer, how to lose a Leo, how to lose, you know, so-and-so. So it helps you understand parts aspects of their characteristics that will push that particular sign away and if you love your you know gemini cancer sag virgo whatever maybe those are things you don't want to do to them that's how i interpreted it yeah no that's exactly right so each you know chapter starts out Mm -hmm. with 
um, obviously some just generalistics about the sign, like, and, and I mm-hmm. added those, like, what stone they like or what animal or mm-hmm. um, just, you know, just, like, little things here and there about the sign because, like, what flower they love. So if someone's like, well, I really want to get my partner some flowers, they can reference my book. Or if they're, you know, at their favorite crystal shop, they're like, oh, what shop, what, you know, what crystal is good for for yeah. Pisces um, or whatever. But I also talk about the ruling planet, right? So the, um, and how in regard to love, so what does Jupiter mean in my sinistry? Mm-hmm. What does Neptune mean in my sinistry? And then I go into the mythology behind each sign and then some positive and negative qualities. Uh, and then in the beginning of each section, I also talk about how a, how each sign loves, like how they like mm-hmm. to love and be loved in return, how to spot one, so how to look for one physically, um, mm-hmm. how to lose one, which is what you were just talking about. And then I also talk about how to bed one, right? Because obviously right, physical yeah. connection is a huge part of relationships. So yeah, so I get into each of that and it's just like, you know, sometimes they're like a page, sometimes they're two pages, depending on which chapter. But yeah, it, it just kind of headways into understanding that that sign entirely. Yeah. It really does, because everybody's so different. Like, you know, I can only talk from myself. Like, I can't be in relationships, any kind of relationships, with people who are not, like, don't talk. Like, people who are super quiet, you know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong, I love my quiet time. I need need that. That one Gemini needs that downtime. But, like, a long-term relationship. Like, I need a lot of interesting conversation to keep me stimulated. That's my... And I know that comes from the Gemini mind, you know, it's constantly going. It never shuts off, you know, which obviously, you know, because you study astrology. So a person who was naturally very reserved and quiet and didn't want to talk and didn't give me a lot of communication wouldn't work in any of my relationships, though, not even romantically, even friendships. They couldn't sustain yeah, and that's that being ruled by Mercury. Mercury mm-hmm. is the planet of communication. Right. Um, I think Mercury gives its children a lot of intelligence, too. And that's, you know, throughout my book, I talk about, we're just talking about Gemini specifically mm-hmm. here, with, like, how important, maybe even the most important thing for Gemini in a relationship is to connect intellectually right, or, or yeah. mentally with, yeah. with the person that they're with. Um, yeah, and that's, yeah. again, that's also air signs, too, like, all air signs like, like to connect yeah. through, through that mo- mode, yeah. but, um, yeah, definitely a Gemini trait, for sure. Yeah, and also it's a, um, um, one of my closest friends, who actually was an ex-partner, and we stayed best friends, is he's a Virgo, And so we have the best conversations when we're both on, you know what I mean? Like we just go on and on and on and on because he's also Mercury is Virgo's ruler also, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. In my my book, I say Gemini and Virgo are when you watch them have a conversation, it's like watching a tennis match, like back and forth and back and forth and back because they could just go nonstop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do. When we're like that, we go and we laugh a lot together. So it's it's a good relationship. And I'm glad it got to stay. He got to stay in my life, even though romantically it didn't work out. But as far as intellectually, it worked out fine. So that's what you're going to find in her book. Um, when you go from, you know, the way you break it down, you'll have different signs like, you you know, Leo and Pisces and Virgo and Aquarius, uh, Libra and Libra, Libra and Aquarius, Scorpio and Scorpio, that's you and your husband. So she breaks each one down and tells you all those aspects. Um, I know I don't want to say, the question isn't what's better, um, compatibilities. I I don't want to say, you know, what's better and what's worse, but maybe, maybe you can just name a couple of signs that seem to be very compatible. And, and, and then the flip side of that, a couple of signs that seem to have maybe more challenges generally and have to watch out for that. If you wouldn't mind. Yeah. So I I don't want to say that there's a sign that works better and the sign that doesn't, Mm -hmm. but I will say that I, think like the juiciest or maybe Mm -hmm. the most underrated 
pairing are the quincunx signs because they have literally nothing in common astrologically. So they don't have the same element. They don't have the same modality. Um, and they don't have the same like yin or yang vibration, right? So there's just like absolutely nothing in common. And so you're like, well, why would that work? Or what is the attraction there? And what I like to say about this particular pairing is that it usually works when they're in like a later stage in life. Mm -hmm. Um, But the reason it does work is because when you are that many signs away they fall into your eighth house their son falls into your eighth house mm-hmm. of um like shared right so eighth house is like scorpio so you think about like shared you think about intimacy and things like mm-hmm. that so whenever i meet a quincunx pair i'm like oh those two are freaks like they <laughs> they <laughs> connect Physically, like they're like, mm-hmm. they have like this super strong physically, physical attraction. And the reason for that is they're just incredibly fascinated with one another um, yeah. because they just have nothing in common. So there's just this fascination. They mm-hmm. do have ways to find connection, even though they don't have anything in common astrologically. Mm-hmm. But that is one sign or one pairing for sure. That is really underrated. And then another one that I think a lot of people have a hard time. And and even for me personally, when I was writing this book, I think the hardest thing for me to write about was semi-sextile. And that's when the signs are like right next to each other, right? So Sagittarius Mm. and Scorpio would be an example of that. Um, And what a lot of people don't realize is usually when you are in a semi-sextile relationship, when your sons are semi-sextile, you probably have a lot of conjunctions in your synastry. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because the personal planets travel really close with the sun. And with the personal planets, they mean Mercury and Mm -hmm. Venus Mm -hmm. and Mars all travel very close to the sun. So there's a really good chance that you have a lot of those same signs conjunct or, or, or sextile. Right. So, um, it's, you know, when I was writing that, I almost wrote it from a, from a perspective of like, Hey, there's actually, you have a lot more in common than, than astrology tells you you do, but you would need to look at your whole entire synastry to look at that. So those are the two, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Cause you do mention in the semi sextile, which is uh, one sign apart that couples sometimes feel intimidated by each other or even jealous there might be more jealousy that presents itself in that kind of a relationship. So <clears throat> that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because people think, oh, well, it's just the sign right next to mine. So we'd be perfect. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> I know. I know so many people who are like, I'll never date a so-and-so again. Right. And then I, I always love when people say stuff like that because I'm like, you need to be careful what you say because the universe goes, oh, Really? Is that what you just said? Let me just bring another person in the same sign, right? Because exactly. maybe there was that's something. Karma. Yeah, that's karma. You were supposed to un- learn something and understand something from this relationship. So when you say those, I never, uh, yeah, I'm always like, be careful. Um, yeah, and not every relationship you're going to be in in your entire life is going to necessarily be the person that you end up with forever. So well, some hi. relationships are are meant to be learning lessons. Um, you know, for me, I've known my husband my whole life, but you know, we didn't. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, I mean, I had I dated other people. There wasn't there was this time where I was even in a different state and I was dating other people and. Then we came back together. And I think when you have the opportunity to have those more difficult relationships, not only do you grow from them, but you learn things and then you're able to appreciate your partner that you end up with more because you know how good you have it. That makes sense. Now, when you look at somebody's chart, um, does it show in their chart like um, a prime time when a relationship is more likely to come, like some people in their life will, you know, have their chart and, you know, maybe they won't have the, the, the significant relationship in their 20s, but will you see like, oh, it looks like when you get here, um, look out for, you know, a romantic partner. 
I'm always curious about that, like how that shows up in a chart. Yeah. So if so, your Saturn return is a huge indicator. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and everyone's Saturn return is different. Mm -hmm. So also, if I see Saturn in the seventh house, that usually means that you'll probably settle down or whatever, and, or maybe find your life partner later in life, because Saturn mm -hmm. is in no rush. Um, if I see Jupiter in the seventh, that usually means like a really important, maybe even early marriage, um, or really like your marriage is like a really important piece of your life. Um, but yeah, everyone goes through a Saturn return. It just, mm -hmm. that simply means that Saturn is back in the sign that it was at the time that you were born. Saturn stays in the sign mm -hmm. for two and a half ish years. Mm -hmm. So your Saturn return takes place in your late twenties. And it's just this like two and a half year period of growing up, right? So mm -hmm. I got engaged when I was in my Saturn return, um, mm -hmm. you know, and everyone's is a little different, but that's, you know, I think a really good indicator of when your life will get, yeah. it's really, Saturn return is all about becoming an adult. Yeah, I interesting that you say that. Um, I'm not married now. I'm divorced, but I got engaged in my Saturn return. So <laughs> it's funny that you said that. <laughs> um, wow, I can't believe it. We're like pretty much out of time. So Desiree, tell everybody the best way to find you. Yeah, so I'm really active on Instagram. And my Instagram is Simply Sun Signs. You can also find me at simplysunsigns.com. My book is sold on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and everywhere that books are sold. Uh, but thank you so much for having me today. Oh, thank you so much. It was so interesting. I love talking about this stuff. Okay, guys, thanks for listening to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, Creating the Life You Crave. And I'm wishing everyone a wonderful week filled with joy, abundance, and love. Peace.